The developer industry is about to go through some of the biggest changes since the invention of high-level programming in the 1970s due to advancements in the world of artificial intelligence. OpenAI, an AI research company, has just launched a game-changing new machine learning tool that converts English into functional code in any major programming language. The software, dubbed Codex, is intended to enable skilled programmers as well as non-programmers to get started with coding. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what awesome applications have been created, simply by commanding the artificial intelligence with spoken English, how this new technology actually works in the first place, and finally, what this means for the future and how it is likely to evolve from this point onwards. OpenAI illustrates how Codex can be used to construct small websites and rudimentary games using natural language, as well as translate between programming languages and answer data science questions in demos. Users enter commands in English, such as, build a web page with a menu on the side and a title at the top, and Codex converts them into code. The program is far from perfect and requires effort to use, but it has the potential to make coding easier and more accessible. You must think deeply about an issue and try to comprehend it, and then map those little bits to existing code, whether it is a library, a function, or an API. The second phase is tiresome, but Codex excels at it. It takes those who are already programmers and takes away the tedious tasks. OpenAI built a product called Copilot for GitHub, a code repository owned by Microsoft, which is also a close collaborator of OpenAI, using an older version of Codex. Copilot works in a similar way to Gmail's autocomplete features, suggesting ways to finish lines of code as users write them. OpenAI's latest version of Codex, on the other hand, is far more powerful and versatile, capable of not only finishing but also generating code. GPT-3, OpenAI's language generation model, was trained on a large portion of the internet, and as a consequence, Codex can produce and interpret the written word in amazing ways. Users discovered producing code as one of GPT-3's applications, but Codex outperforms its predecessors by being trained exclusively on open-source code repositories collected from the web. Many developers have complained that OpenAI is benefiting unfairly from their efforts because of this last aspect. OpenAI's Copilot tool, for example, frequently proposes bits of code written by others, and the program's whole knowledge base is generated from open-source work, which is given to benefit individuals rather than businesses. The same complaints will almost certainly be levied about Codex, despite the fact that OpenAI claims its use of this data is permitted by law under the Fair Use Doctrine. New technology is coming, we do need this debate, and there will be things we do that the community has excellent points on, and we will take input and do things differently," OpenAI said when questioned about the concerns. However, OpenAI's work will ultimately help the coding community as a whole. The overall consequence is that the environment gains a lot of value. At the end of the day, I believe that these sorts of technologies have the potential to transform our economy and make the world a better place for all of us. OpenAI and its investors will undoubtedly benefit from Codex. Although OpenAI began as a non-profit lab in 2015, it converted to a limited profit model in 2019 to attract outside investment, and while Codex is now available for free, the firm plans to charge for access at some time in the future. OpenAI says it doesn't want to use Codex to create its own tools, since it's better suited to improving the core model. They recognized that pursuing any of those would close off all of our other options. You may choose to be the greatest at one thing as a startup. And there's no doubt that this results in better versions of all of these models for us. Of course, while Codex sounds fantastic, it's difficult to know the full extent of its possibilities until actual programmers have had a chance to play with it. Many of the people taking part, weren't programmers, but did see Codex in action and shared their thoughts on it. OpenAI presented the software to the world online, first building a basic website and then a short game utilizing Codex. Brockman discovered a silhouette of a human on Google Images and ordered Codex to include this image of a person before typing in the URL in the game demo. Brockman manipulated the scale of the silhouette before making it controllable on screen. Everything went off without a hitch. The figure began to move around the screen, but we soon discovered that it was going off screen. To prevent this, Brockman offered the computer a new command. 
Continuously check if the person is off the page and, if so, put it back on the page. This kept it from disappearing, but I was wondering as to how exact these directions needed to be. Make sure the user can't quit the page, I offered as one alternative. This worked as well, but it also altered the breadth of the image, squashing it flat on screen for reasons neither Brockman nor Zaremba can understand. It doesn't always understand exactly what you're asking. He gives it a few more tries before figuring out a command that works without the undesired modification. So you had to think about what was going on a little, but not too thoroughly. This is okay in this small demonstration, but it reveals a lot about the program's limits. OpenAI does not promise to be a magical genie that can read your mind and convert every instruction into faultless code. Instead, it requires some thinking and some trial and error to put into practice. Codex isn't going to transform non-programmers into experts overnight, but it's clearly more approachable than any other programming language. OpenAI is optimistic about Codex's potential to transform programming and computers in general. It may help alleviate the US programmer shortage, according to Brockman, while Zaremba sees it as the next step in the evolution of coding. What is going on with Codex has happened a few times previously. Programming was done in the early days of computers by generating actual punch cards that had to be fed into machines, and then individuals created and refined the first programming languages. These programming languages became to resemble English, with words like print and exit, and as a result, more individuals were able to program. The next step in this trajectory is to completely eliminate specialist coding languages in favor of English language instructions. Codex may also command and control other applications. Brockman demonstrates how the program may be used to develop a speech interface for Microsoft Word in one demonstration. Codex may feed Word instructions in code produced from the user's spoken commands because Word has its own API. Brockman puts a poem into a Word document, then orders Word to remove all indentations, number the lines, count the number of times specific words appear, and so on. It's incredibly smooth, however it's difficult to say how well it'd operate outside of a pre-arranged demo. If it works, Codex may become a new interface between users and computers, not only for programmers. According to OpenAI, it has tested Codex's capacity to manage not just Word, but also Spotify and Google Calendar. While the Word sample is only a proof of concept, Brockman claims that Microsoft is already interested in investigating the software's potential. They're really enthusiastic about the concept in general, so expect to see a lot more Codex applications. OpenAI claimed in the study, perhaps anticipating criticism, that the danger posed by models like Codex may be minimized by thorough documentation and user interface design, code review, and content controls. According to the business, incorporating user review, use case limitations, monitoring, and rate limiting in the context of a model made accessible as a service might also assist to decrease damages. So, what is your opinion on this entirely new way of programming? Do you believe that it will take over a large percentage of classical programming, or is it likely to stay niche for the rest of time? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.